Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Abby here. And first thing I want to do is apologize to the many people that I promised this video and my mind just caught up with my actions. So I'm finally doing it. Um, this is to go over my Abu Dhabi UAE freelance visa process. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I live in the UAE. I have for the past three years. I was a teacher in Dubai, a physical education teacher, and I just recently I uh, got my freelance license for photography and videography here in Abu Dhabi, UAE. Um, so as I said before, I was supposed to tell people about this process a while ago, but I'm just now kind of getting the time, wrapping my head around things and also just finding out more information. I don't necessarily like giving piece by piece by piece. I kind of just like giving everything at one time. So here is my effort to, to do that. So yeah, let's get into it. My Abu Dhabi UAE freelance visa process. I kind of just put this together. So if there's some misspellings, I will just have to ignore it. Forgive me. We'll skip over it. Okay. So um, first things first, um, if you are here in the UAE, it is advisable. It is advisable to get your UAE pass stuff sorted. The UAE pass is pretty much um, an app that just authenticates you it gives you the opportunity to sign leases and things of that nature and prove your identity within a system that is you know um, connected to your Emirates ID if you are already a resident I'm not really sure how it works for people who are brand new here but if you already have some type of residency here if you've had a former job and you're you know transferring it over to your own freelance uh, situation go ahead and get the UAE passing sorted it made life a little bit easier for me not having to um, go double back and, and get that process together um, next thing um, you'll want to go to the Abu Dhabi Business Center uh, website adbc.gov okay so this website is where you can go and get your freelance business where you can go and apply and so once you're on this website if you actually just scroll down you'll see a tab for freelance visas uh, but you'll see a freelancers license so just like that's all right yeah so let me fix that uh, you have to get your license and then you can get your visa so there's multiple steps in, in this process the license is giving you permission pretty much checking if you are able to do what you say that you can do and so once you have that license the license then gives you opportunity to get the visa so I got my freelance license first. I actually got my freelance license while I was still a teacher. And then after I had finished my uh, my contract with them and they canceled my visa, my teacher visa, then I was able to go and get with the license, start the process for my visa. So that is where we are at the moment. So I got the license from this website right here. Okay from this website right here, clicked on the prompt, got my license, gave them the proof so to ask for, you know, what do you want to do? Um, so for me as a photographer, videographer, they wanted proof that I could do this. So I uploaded different documentation showing that if there's plenty of different areas that you can get a freelance license in, uh, you may have a degree or some type, type, some type of proof to where their back office will say, okay, yeah, this person can offer this particular service. Um, they're good to go. Um, and so once that process has been approved, you kind of like get your name and then you get the permission to, to, you know, do that certain thing that you've asked to do and then you move forward so this actually so i know that you all are going to want pricing i will give you a roundabout pricing for each area that i had to kind of achieve this uh the freelance license to, uh, you know the uae has um just reconformed some things to make it um, a, a smoother process for people who are wanting to come, um, you know, with coronavirus and people wanted to do re remote working, they really simplified the process to, um, to get the ball rolling without it being a humongous financial expense on the front end. So this only cost me about 530 dirhams, which if you are in the U S uh, 530 dirhams is about $144. Okay. So this freelance license the permission to say i would like to be a photographer in abu dhabi cost me 144 dirhams okay so let's move on to the next thing uh what i had to do next was uh, once i got the license i needed to um get my visa process um uh, figured out okay which is like a labor related process to give me the permission to to live in the country so i have permission to do my activity which is photography in the country but now i need to go through the rest of the process to see if i can live here to become a resident so i will no longer be using my teacher residency because my former school had sponsored me now that i have 
the license so the license right the business license so i am a business owner 100 percent. there are different things in this country as well to where maybe you would need um like an emirati to to go into business with you so you can have it but once again like i said i commend the uae i own 100 percent of my business and it's it's not a situation to where i needed somebody from here to help me along that process so okay if you know you know right so anyway um now it's my, it's time for my business to sponsor me okay um and so here are the things i, I wrote everything down i'll kind of go through it in the best way i know how uh, mind you this literally took me a couple of weeks to get done so um e-channel the e-channel i'm not even gonna lie to you i don't 100 percent know what it is but you kind of need it to get this ball rolling it is the portal that helps you through the approval process keeps everything kind of like in line and so that you can know what steps to take but let me say tashil tashil i hope i'm saying it right is a center is a business center that I believe there's a few of them there's a business center where you can go and individuals can help you along the process so i want to thank i, I don't know if muhammad will ever see us but muhammad was an individual who helped me through my entire process and one thing about this this area here this business center is that you do have people who also speak arabic so we know that uae they, they speak arabic here and a lot of times if you don't have somebody to help you a lot a lot of times you need things in english and in arabic okay so going to a, a center or finding a service that can help you translate things as well is you know is wonderful so anyway i needed an e-channel which is a portal to help my business get things started and yeah, things of that nature. The E channel, the E channel was um, pretty expensive, but you know it, it's what I needed. I needed it. So the E channel cost me about twelve hundred dollars. Okay, about four thousand six hundred dirhams. Twelve hundred dollars to have this particular portal, but this is a portal where I can continue to apply and implement the next steps that I needed to complete my visa process. Um, so for the E channel, you will need a passport picture, which I was not aware of. So the E channel, they can sign up for you at this center if this is the way that you go, and then you also need your passport picture. So go ahead and and have those on hand. I didn't have it the first time I came. Um, so passport picture will come up a, a few times. So just make sure you go ahead when, when you go to the place you have these things sorted. So, okay, another thing that I needed to do is the Federal Authority ID Citizen. Um, I believe when I got sent here, right, when I got sent here, it was the e-channel saying, hey, your phone number is not connected to your Emirates ID. So I had to go over to this center and get them to change um, my information so uh, the gentleman had given me this paper and it said not exist mobile numbers so I had to go um, to that to that area to the identification area and get my mobile number uh, connected and everything like that from the back end so this is something you may run into uh, but just a heads up on that um, and then I needed to sign up for my visa all right, you need to sign up for the visa, the residency visa, the and all, and all this other stuff. Okay, so I'll go through that a little bit more. Let's see, sorry. Um, okay, so real quick, you need an e-channel, get a passport picture. You may have to go and get some other information added from this particular um uh, business center here you need to get the visa you'll also need health insurance you will need your residency and work visa and I okay I'll go through this so I have an investor visa the type of visa that I have is an investor visa okay because it is under a business but you also need permission to live here and to work here okay and that is the investor visa that I have the also you will need an Emirates ID so you need a new one I was able to uh, get my residency changed because I already had a process but then like this is kind of the breakdown I know I'm babbling and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> but either way um, so this yeah, the residency status changed because I was in Dubai and now I moved to Abu Dhabi next after all of this here okay after I got my e-channel got things switched at the federal authority I started my visa process I'm gonna go through health insurance in a moment got my residency and work and investor visa approved I needed to go and get a medical so the medical um, when I went to, it was an area that was you know just down from where I was at Tashil um, I needed to have a green pass with COVID and everything like that they have green passes here 
and I did not have a PCR test within uh, the former 48 hours so I wasn't able to go on that day had to go get a PCR test and it was you know valid within 48 hours so I was able to go and get it they took an x-ray and they drew blood okay um, for that just to make sure that you're good to go you're in good health and you know that you know we kind of want you here stuff like that okay um all right so the health insurance plan the health insurance plan that I got um, I had to get what was it called again uh, it had to be the enhanced plan so I went with the HQ which is a highly recommended insurance plan here and because of the type of visa that I have which is the investor visa I had to get this enhanced plan okay and not other services that it may have which might be um, a little bit you know less in terms of cost um, this plan I guess is just helping with liabilities or whatnot if anything were to happen to you so if this is the same route that you're going be prepared for that so uh, all in all my insurance plan is probably the most expensive thing throughout this particular process but we're not compared to um, what I would have to pay in the United States if I were to get insurance by myself I'm pretty sure it's it's reasonable when you when you look at the number so this demand HQ insurance plan and it's not gonna be safe for everybody because I'm relatively young and good health no you know medical history concerns and, and things of that nature so this for the year cost me 6,500 dirhams which is about $1,700 okay but when I look at it I'm just like $1,700 for a year of insurance in the event that something happens to me I can't I can't cry about that you know what I'm saying so so you know what I'm saying so I'm, I'm happy that I have it um, apparently if I don't necessarily use it within a year it's a possibility that it can go down next year but you know like I said you can't play with your health if anything were to happen to me I need somebody to see me I don't want to skimp on that um, but it was it, it has been along this process the most expensive thing that I've had to to pay for um, all right so after you get these things in order you get to approval for your visa you get your medical you get your what was that you get your insurance plan oh also another thing about the insurance plan I had some weird thing but anyway they printed out the insurance card for me and we're submitting it trying to you know get my my next step together and it kept bouncing back bouncing back the reason it bounced back is because they wanted another passport picture on my insurance card and so if you are running into an issue to where it's like, but I have insurance, it's not bouncing back, put your picture on it, you should be good to go. All right, so visa stamping, what I had to do for the visa stamping was go to the, um, the post office, pay like, I think it was like 34 dirham or something like that for the visa stamping. They take your passport and they send it off to whomever and then they actually delivered it back to my door, which was great. So I had the visa stamping, I have an official visa, with my company name investor visa so that's great um after the visa stamping do I have anything else okay so after the visa stamping then you're kind of good to go you wait for your Emirates ID which should have been approved back when you were uh, getting all of this stuff together in the e-channel all right your Emirates ID uh, will be ready at the post office they'll actually email you or text message you when you are uh, when you can come and pick it up from the uh, the post office so yeah, uh, all in all, right, this whole process was very interesting. It took me a couple weeks um, to get it done, but I got it done, thankfully. Um, and so just one more time. So I had to go through and get the UAE pass. I had to get go to the Abu Dhabi Business Center, went to Tashil and did a number of different things for that. Uh, got my Emirates ID medical in order to get the visa and also uh, the health insurance. So um, all in all, this entire process to have me live in the country uh, for three years I have my business license for two years and I have a year of health insurance all in all that cost me about 13,600 dirhams which is about three thousand seven hundred dollars and I don't think that's that's I don't think that's bad you know there's other companies that are doing all of this for you know certain people 
um, but they also have their own charges and stuff like that for the convenience. So if this is not something that you have the time to go from place to place, from day to day to go and get sorted out, there are different companies out there that are offering it for a, a higher price, but it's to stop you from running around all over the place. So um, I didn't mind my process because I had the, I actually had the time to go and get it all sorted out. But, you know, just, just so you know that there are options out there. One other thing, I've been talking for a while, um, that I found out a little bit later is about, they have a stamping process here, like a, like a le legit stamp um, in order to, I guess, process invoices and make sure that you're giving proof that, you know, businesses have paid and things of that nature. I ran into this a little bit later, I didn't even know. Um, this is, you know, not expensive at all, but you have to take your business license to a stamping place and they create, they create your stamp and you can stamp invoices and, and give proof and permission that, you know, you're a le legitimate business. So but just a heads up on that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if I can recall these, inf this information, I'd be happy to share it with you. Um, I wish you all the best in your endeavors as well and take care.